in this problem, we're going to calculate a bunch of different features of tangent and cotangent functions. Uh, we're going to do midline, uh, vertical scaling factor, or you can think of that as your amplitude, your period, and your phase shift of these different functions. I'm not going to go through every single one of these four equations because we're going to see that this uh, is the same method for every single one of the problems, but I will go over two of these that I think are representative. Let's start with number one right here. And I'm just going to pull that down here, and we're going to start talking about this. So number one says f of x equals negative one plus one quarter tangent three x plus pi over four. Now, this is not exactly in the standard form that we're used to thinking about these things. What's different? Take a look at it. Uh, you'll notice that this tangent function right here usually is up front. It's to the left. And in this particular example, it was just put to the right. So no big deal. You just take that minus one and think of it as being over here. Okay, that's your midline. And if you want, you can rearrange these functions into standard form. Uh, as you get more practice, you won't need to, but maybe it's a good exercise to go through. So the midline, just said, is negative one. And the vertical scaling factor, well, that's going to be the number that is in front of the tangent function. Think of that as your amplitude. We, do, we just don't call it amplitude for tangents and cotangents, but that's your one quarter scaling factor right there. And then period, if you remember where period comes from, that comes from this variable right here, which we call b. So if b equals three, then p equals pi over b, which makes pi over three. Okay, remember that's a different formula than it was with sines and cosines. We use pi over b, not two pi over b. So this is pi over three, because I have a b factor of three. That's my horizontal scaling factor. And then phase shift is just this nice little guy in here. Remember, this is always of the form x minus h. So what's h in this sense? Well, you see, if x minus h is x plus pi over four, h must be negative pi over four. Watch that negative sign. You have to remember it's not x plus h, it's x minus. And that's because horizontal shifts, if you remember from transformations, horizontal shifts are always a sign flip from what you're expecting. Okay, so that's a good starter example. Let's go over one that I think is a little more challenging, and we'll do this, and then we'll call it good. So this example has f of x equals three times the cotangent now, and then it just gives you this stuff. See, the inside of the parentheses is a little different from what we're used to. It doesn't have things broken out very clearly with what b is and what h is. So we're going to have to do some work untying that. But at the very beginning, I can at least do this much. I can say y equals 2, that midline equation, and I can say the vertical scaling factor is 3. And if you were in a times test, for example, and you had this problem, I would just go through real quick and get all those midlines and vertical scaling factors because those are easy. Now, how do we turn this into a standard form equation? Well, remember what I want. Um, this part won't change, but I would like to see some factor times a parentheses. And that parentheses is going to have x in it, and it's going to have h in it. So obviously the b factor, the thing multiplied against x, is 5 pi over 6. And you can see I factored that out. The question is, what is h? Well, if you remember how GCFs work, when you factor out a greatest common factor, you divide the term by that greatest common factor to see what is left behind, so to speak. So if I want to know what goes here, that's going to be 5 pi over 12, what I started with, divided by my GCF, which is 5 pi over 6. And that's going to be, if you remember how keep flip change works, it's going to be 5, or 5 pi over 12 times 6 over 5 pi. Now those 5 pi's cancel out. This one works out rather nicely. And I get 6 twelfths, or in other words, 1 half. So my phase shift is 1 half. And I would write that in the box this way. I would say the period, oh, we haven't gotten to the period yet. Hold on. The phase shift is positive 1 half. Remember that sign flip. Okay. And now, speaking of the period, let's figure that out. Uh, P equals pi over B, right? which for us is pi divided by our b factor. That's horizontal scaling factor, 5 pi over 6. And we do a little more key flip change. This is going to be pi over 1 times 
6 over 5 pi. The pi's cancel out, and I just get 6 over 5. Okay, so that's my period, 6 over 5, literally 1.2. Don't put decimals. It doesn't like those. Um, it may look a little weird that we don't have pi values in here. The reason there's no pi in the period and the phase shift is because you have a pi in the B factor. See this guy right here? When the B factor has a pi in it, your period and your phase shift will not. It's just something weird that happens sometimes, uh, but usually our B factor does not have a pi in it, so it's not something to be concerned about.